professor here. And well, I've had some people ask about how are you doing webinars? How are you bringing in all this new technology? And as you can see, you know, here we are in the studio. We've been actually doing some filming. I'm actually over here doing some editing too. And I'm editing a webinar that I did that's called Losses at Light Speed. And I'm incorporating some new ways of being able to present electronic payments information. Now, there's a couple of things in here. First of all, it's losses at light speed. And in this segment, we talk about what are the risks that come with faster payments? Now, it's just a portion of the entire webinar, but I thought I'd share it with you so you can learn a couple of things. A, see some of those new fancy techniques that are out there allowing you to be able to have more fun with webinars. And B, learn a little bit more about the risk involved when it comes to losses at light speed. Are you ready? to suffer losses at light speed when you start moving to faster payments? Well, by gosh, by golly, I hope not because nobody wants to do that. When it comes to fraud, when it comes to faster payments, a question I get a lot, and the thing I hear a lot really too is, does faster payments equal faster risk? Well, does it? Well, does it really change the world of risk? Why don't we take a look at what the world of risk looks like when it comes to faster payments? First, we have our credit risk. Now, credit risk, I've always referred to as the empty pockets or the empty wallets risk. It's when somebody ain't got no money. Well, will there be credit risk when it comes to faster payments? Believe it or not, I'm gonna go with no. Wait, wait, how can you say no? Well, if you look at how faster payment systems work, and I'm gonna be specifically talking, let's say RTP and the upcoming Fed now, or Fed later, depending on when it gets here. Maybe, maybe we can go with Fed eventually. Well, Fed now and RTP, they require that the money be there before you can send it. Does that mean that you as a financial institution require it to be there before you send it? Well, if you do, then you won't have a credit risk. If you allow people to send money they don't have, you then have a credit risk. So is there credit risk when it comes to faster payments? Depends on how you do it. What about liquidity risk? Well, liquidity, it is actually gonna be managed and worked differently when it comes to faster payments than what we see classically. Now, you could look at it to be very similar to wires. Actually, it's extremely similar to wires because it's one at a time transactions and you got an account, you got a balance. And if you look at how FedNow is gonna work, it's gonna be that master account. So liquidity risk, very similar to what we see with wires, but not the same as what we see in ACH. So that one, it's gonna be a little bit different. Let's keep going though. What about legal risk? Well, we've always got a legal risk. I also call this compliance risk. It's making sure you're following the rules so you don't get sued, so you don't lose money. Every financial institution wants to make sure that they don't lose money. So how can you help guarantee that that happens? You make sure that you are doing all that you can to be able to limit those risks. Well, how do you do that? Well, you make sure that you get with your attorneys. You make sure that you're following the rules. You make sure that you are doing everything you can to be able to limit those risks. But the big question that comes up is, are there new risk? Are there new laws that you have to be able to follow when it comes to faster payments? Yes. Now, not new laws, not yet. Will the laws change? Potentially. But if you're gonna work with FedNow, there's gonna be their rules for using it. If you're gonna work with RTP, they have their rules for working with it. Similar to what we already see with ACH. If you work with ACH, does Reg CC apply in some situations? Does UCC 4A apply in some situations? Do the ACH rules apply? Absolutely. So it'll be similar. So there are gonna be those legal risks. They don't go away. Well, what about cybercrime? Well, <laughs> it does happen to be Cybersecurity Month, and yes, it's going to happen. No payment channel is immune to that. Well, what about operational risk? Same thing. This is actually no different. It's just a payment channel that will go faster. Same thing. All right, do we have anything else? Yeah. What if there are delays in processing? <gasps> but, but professor, if we're talking faster payments, faster payments are payments that are supposed to be faster and well, from what I see, they're 24 seven, 365, and they happen within seconds. What happens if there's a delay? You got a problem. You've actually got a pretty big problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, legal risk is gonna change a little bit. Operational risk, it's actually gonna probably increase a little bit. 
But are there any other risks when it comes to our classic risk? Yes, there is. There's the risk that your workload is going to get to be a lot of fun. This is one I get a lot. I have people tell me a lot, hey, how am I supposed to work 24-7, 365? Before everybody panics, the reality is you probably already offer 24-7, 365. We have these things called cards. Yes, these, these plastic cards that we use, are they not 24-7, 365? Have you not figured out how to work those? But yet, I do have to be you know, honest and say, hey, there is gonna be yet another payment channel, yet another system that somebody's gonna have to work with, that somebody's gonna have to manage. Moving along. What about fraud? Um, fraud? Uh, what's that? Yeah, what's that? We all know fraud's for real. Fraud is a major risk. Fraud is something that happens whenever money is involved. Will the fraudsters use the faster payment systems to be able to commit fraud? Well, if this was in Minnesota, I'd go with a you betcha. But um, I'm down in the South and I'm gonna go with yes, yes, yes. I'm coming out live here from Tampa. And let me just say, yes, yes, yes. Fraud's gonna happen in faster payment channels. Anybody who thinks it's not going to, um, tell me how, because I would love to hear it. Because when it comes to working with fraud and faster payments, this is a quote that I, 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 I pulled and I really love, is it says, faster payment services may, and I know you can read the screen, but I'm gonna read it for you. Faster payment services may be a more attractive target for fraud than traditional retail payments. It goes on to say, if, this is if, if funds are immediately and unconditionally available, irrevocable is what we call that too, to the payee, the fraudster could attempt to quickly withdraw the funds before the fraud is detected and measures to reverse or recall fraudulent payments may have limited effectiveness. Okay, let me start with, these are final irrevocable payments. It does not mean that there are not mechanisms for getting the payment back. But in a similarity, because I'm gonna assume some of you are familiar with ACH, hopefully most of you are, and we have what we call reversal in ACH. Let me be clear, a reversal is an attempt to get your funds back. It is not a guarantee. So in faster payments, RTP, and the upcoming FedNow, will there be mechanisms to attempt to get the money back? Yes, but there will be no guarantee. So is there a fraud risk? Yes, and we're gonna get deeper into the fraud after this Payments Professor Pop Quiz. Are you ready? That's right, you can't be a Payments Professor without having a pop quiz. So let's go ahead. First question, what type of risk is a fraud risk? Would it be A, when numbers are transposed while entering a transaction and the money gores because the professor doesn't use spell check effectively? Oh no, oh gosh, that happened. Um, the wrong person, that should be goes for those of you who aren't sure. Or B, when the software has a glitch and funds are lost. Or C, when someone tricks someone into sending them money. Or D, when someone intentionally takes money from an account. Okay, and our answers are gonna be, well, we have, first of all, C, when someone tricks someone into sending money. But if you answer D, guess what? You're also correct. Because I tricked you there. I, I, did, I, did, I did that thing where, uh, you know, it's just, hey, you didn't see that coming. Because it could be both. See, that's the thing. And this is what we're gonna be discovering as we move forward when we start talking about risk in faster payment systems, especially when it's a credit push only system. That's what makes the whole world a difference. Okay, what did you guys think about that? That is, again, just a segment from a webinar I did. It's called Losses at Lightspeed that deals with the fraud and risks that are involved with faster payments. There's gonna be some more parts of it, so you know what, stay tuned for next week's episode. Now, if you do have any comments you'd like to share with me, you can email me, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. And if you'd like to see more full courses, kind of like that, you can go to paymentsprofessor.com and if you're enjoying this video, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Class dismissed. Now. Now.